This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're going to figure out if a sitting US president can actually go to jail. And if crime is something you're interested in, Skillshare's got your back. With over 24,000 online classes such as explaining the criminal mind in 60 seconds, Skillshare has what you need to learn new things or maybe just hone your existing skills and knowledge. Premium membership will give you unlimited access to topics that will improve your skills and in the process your life. The first 1,000 people to sign up by visiting the link in the description will receive two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today. Now let's start the main part of the video. America is great because she is good. If America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great," wrote French political scientist Alexis de Tocqueville in his 1835 book, Democracy in America. The USA, he believed, offered equality that was not seen in other nations. The founding fathers of the US had created a form of ruling that was not able to be tyrannical, that was chosen by the people and served the people, and if it failed to do so would be removed. This America was a long way from absolute monarchies and from the authoritarian government presided over by powerful dictators. It was supposed to embody what Thomas Jefferson wrote in the US Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal. With that in mind, welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show. Can a US President Go to Jail? If all men are created equal, perhaps this means that all men should be treated as equals when it comes to matters of justice. That's why there are laws and no people in a democracy should be immune to punishment. We could argue that the scales of justice do seem to be tipped in favor of those that have more money. To avoid close scrutiny by law enforcement or to hire brilliant legal teams to perhaps undo wrongdoings. Notwithstanding the sometimes mind-boggling chicanery a very wealthy person might employ to get them out of trouble, everyone in the USA should be answerable to the same laws. This must mean that an American president can surely go to jail or prison. Just so you know, jail and prison are sometimes interchangeable words, but here in the USA, jail is usually the place you go to for a short stint before you have a court hearing or if you're just serving a very short sentence. Prison is the place you go to after you've been convicted of a crime. Ok, so first of all, a what if question. What if a president lost his mind and ran out of the White House stark naked and then suddenly plunging a recently procured White House kitchen knife into astounded tourists? Could that president be charged and convicted of a number of crimes, say attempted murder, murder, and perhaps public indecency? It's not all that simple. When the writers of the Constitution drafted their timeless piece, they had to think of what would happen if a president went off the rails and committed a crime or crimes. Such wrongdoing, they said, might be treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. If that should happen, they said, first there would be impeachment by the House of Representatives, and then it would be up to the Senate to convict the wrongdoer. What this could mean is while the president is still in power, he can't be indicted, meaning the cops couldn't just turn up outside the White House, taser the wayward leader, and detain him in one of the city's finest jails until he had his day in court. He first would have to be impeached and then removed from office. That would take some time. After he has been removed according to the Constitution, he or she will be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to the law. But it's complicated. If we look at the crime we described, it's perhaps too unbelievable to even discuss. But would he be prosecuted if it happened? One professor at Yale wrote this, The framers implicitly immunized a sitting president from ordinary criminal prosecution, so again he would have to be impeached first. We don't really know what would happen in this case. Perhaps an assumed enemy would be blamed for somehow being able to control the mind of the president. We can safely say the president would be removed from active duties, although somewhere along the proceedings the public would be told something nefarious had happened. He'd probably be judged insane as a result of dark outside influences. We really don't know and unfortunately no sources online have discussed the possibility of such a heinous crime. But this is an extreme case, so let's look at something more down to earth. If we look at what's called a high crime, that's different. High crimes are usually things like perjury, bribery, abuse of power. These things we certainly can imagine a president doing. According to US legal scholar Ronald Rotunda, 
If the president committed one of these high crimes, he'd face the law. Rotunda wrote while investigating former President Clinton, it is proper, constitutional, and legal for a federal grand jury to indict a sitting president for serious criminal acts that are not part of and are contrary to the president's official duties. In this country, no one, even President Clinton, is above the law. Still, others disagree. Time magazine in 2018 featured a story written by the former principal lawyer for Vice President Spiro Agnew. He wrote, an imperial presidency was the worst fear of the founders. As we said, the founders' new tyranny was always bound to happen when one person or group had too much power and attendant impunity. The Constitution had to preclude that this tyranny or corruption could never happen. The writer states again that first the president would have to be impeached, then removed, and he would then possibly face prison. It's just never happened. The Atlantic also wrote a story in 2018 asking if a sitting president could be indicted. That writer said there was no clear answer. He decided to ask this question to six well-known legal scholars regarding if a sitting president could be indicted. Four answered, three said no, and one said yes. The writer turned to academics, and many answers came back, some saying that indicting a president would be just too disruptive. Another disagreed, saying the Constitution was written so that such a disruption when needed could occur. Another said that no expert can answer the question, stating that one could only have an opinion on this matter. There's no airtight legal framework that can guarantee an answer. We apologize that we can't ascertain a clear answer to the question in this show, but it seems there is nobody out there who knows. The Constitution was written so that the president could face the law as you and I do, but while in office it would seem that indicting a president would be very hard to do. That seems wrong to some because if the founders had wanted to give immunity to presidents, that would have been explicitly written into the Constitution. Perhaps the Constitution should have some small print where it says, all men are created equal. In that small print we can read, subject to change without notice not applicable outside of warranty. Is that too cynical? What do you think about all this? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other show, The President's Escape Plan If the US Is Attacked. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.